A quiet harbor in rural England, July 1944. Dear Howard, we're back in home port now for our first real rest since D-Day. The day that saw the beginning of the greatest crusade in history, the freeing of an enslaved Europe. And thousands of young Americans helped open that road to liberation. Every hour more are returning from the Normandy beachhead. Many of them on stretchers. Some are shipmates of the Coast Guardsmen in this barracks. It's hard to forget that. It's even harder to forget the others who will never come back to us. Only three weeks ago, we were all here together, working and waiting. It seems almost like yesterday. If only you could have seen this harbor then, the ugly, flat-bottomed LCIs. The smaller craft always on the go. The snub-nosed LCVPs that would spearhead the coming invasion the fast Coast Guard rescue cutters that later were to save so many lives. Hundreds of ships and landing craft, each with its specific job. You remember young Bill Jackson, who sang in your boys' choir? He was serving aboard the rescue cutter Flying Angel. For months, Bill and the others were put through invasion maneuvers. They called them dry runs, and other terms not in our vocabulary. By now, the GIs were resigned to these seagoing excursions and convinced they had joined the Marines. Our men began to feel they were running a water taxi service. They kept hoping each dry run might turn out to be more than just another rehearsal. Whenever the flotilla lost sight of land, you could feel the growing tension aboard ship. But always the objective turned out to be another section of the English coast. Our boys would go through the same never-changing procedure. Get the infantry aboard the landing craft and then head in fast for the beaches. Soldiers and sailors all thought they were pretty good by now. They were, except for a few minor kinks. And so it went, until they had established another beachhead in England. But it was the aftermath of every maneuver that really got our Coast Guardsmen down. Maintenance to them was just more monotonous routine get everything ship shape so it could be all fouled up in the next dry run. Sometimes, if the lads were lucky, liberty ashore met a date. They were lonely for the long-remembered friendships of home. It helped, even for a little while, to get away from the ships and the maneuvers and the war they felt they weren't fighting. But their hours ashore ended all too quickly. Another day, 
and once again the harbor swarmed with men and ships. Once again, everything was being made ready for the order to up anchor. The LCVPs ferried the troops out to the waiting transports. CIs took on more infantry, engineers, and medical corpsmen. Every man had done it all a hundred times before. Every ship and landing craft fitted into the operation like the parts of a jigsaw puzzle. A puzzle that always worked out in the same meaningless pattern. And then it happened. Attention, men, attention! From General Eisenhower to all soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force, you are about to embark upon the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. Good luck. That changed everything. Now the boys knew this wasn't just another war game. This time, they would be playing for keeps. floating piers of concrete and steel to be used in the construction of our invasion harbors were towed across the channel. When we headed out this time, many of us wondered when we'd see the cliffs of England again. Hour after hour, our passing bomber fleets fill the Channel skies. The men were quiet now each alone with his thoughts and fears. We spotted a lone enemy observation plane. anti-aircraft guns went into action. The enemy might suspect our coming. But when we would strike, and where, was a secret we meant to keep. All that day, following a zigzag course, we moved steadily and stealthily toward our appointed rendezvous off the coast of France. With the coming of sunset, all chaplains held services on deck. We were in God's hands now. 
and every man, no matter what his faith, sought strength and solace in prayer. At dusk, we arrived at the rendezvous and hove to under the welcome cover of the deepening night. Now began the most trying ordeal of all, waiting through the long, nerve-straining silence for each hour. swept the enemy beaches with brooms of fire. And by dawn, the smaller landing craft were in the water, ready to take on their cargoes of infantry. guns fought it out with hidden Nazi shore batteries, our first wave moved in. From the skies, hundreds of planes provided air cover for the seaborne invasion below. While operating inshore, fast rocket boats showered the enemy with their rain of death. in close to the obstacle barricade and dropped their ramps. <laughs> through deadly enemy machine gun and mortar fire, the troops waded through deep water to the shore. Many never reached it. larger LCIs came shouldering in with more infantry to reinforce our hard-won foothold. rescue cutters were already going about their grim business of picking up the wounded and the dead. During those next violent days, while we were fighting to extend our gains, Thousands of men and vast quantities of supplies and equipment were shuttled in from the sea. We landed more medical field units. 
The severely wounded were carried to the relative safety of outlying hospital ships and transports. two-way traffic never stopped. The wounded going out, the ever-growing tide of more men and material pouring in. When the enemy had been pushed back from the beaches, the mammoth LSTs came lumbering ashore with their tons of heavy equipment. head to Berlin was established. The invasion surged farther inland, gaining power as it went. Now the troops were on their own. Allied armies rolled forward. Thousands of German prisoners were filtered to the rear to wait until we had time to evacuate them. Scores of our older merchant vessels had been scuttled to form protective breakwaters against the treacherous seas. Now the full fury of a channel gale swept our invasion coast. had taken its toll, adding to the high price we had already paid in men and ships. The Flying Angel was among our Coast Guard losses. Young Bill Jackson will never sing in your choir again. I have already written his parents. That's the hardest part of our task. Those last letters we of the chaplain corps must write. There are so many deeds of courage and sacrifice that cannot be measured in mere words. They must be recorded by a much greater power than is ours. So much for now, old friend. The great crusade of liberation is well begun. I myself have been more than fortunate. My prayer is that I will always be with my boys in whatever trials may lie ahead. Mm -hmm.